Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. AUVSI announces safety and performance initiatives. Drones are a new but valuable tool in hurricane response and recovery. And GDU launches collapsible GDU-02. Hi, I'm Bree Cross. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI. AUVSI announced at a meeting of its Remote Pilots Council several initiatives to promote safety and performance in the UAS industry. AUVSI President and CEO Brian Wynn said the initiatives will support the integral role of skilled and responsible operators in the advancement of UAS. Quote, as more commercial UAS pilots and operators are trained and certified, they will join the aviation community's long-standing culture and commitment to safety and performance, Wynn said. AUVSI announced five initiatives. Safety Award Program. These awards will recognize operators and organizations that demonstrate outstanding contributions of airmanship, safety, and operational excellence to the UAS industry. Increased Advocacy. The RPC will increase its visibility to proactively address challenges within the regulatory process and provide solutions by collaborating and supporting innovation, technology, and risk management. Partner approved AUVSI accredited certification program. AUVSI is collaborating with leading standards and certification providers to establish unified standards for commercial UAS. Safety Credit Program. Working with industry leaders, AUVSI will develop a credit program to support the emerging safety culture in the UAS community. Collaborative Information Portal. AUVSI will provide an interactive tool as a service to its members for sharing knowledge, experience, and observations to conduct safe and responsible UAS operations. AUVSI's RPC is a forum for remote pilots to engage directly with one another and the FAA. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. FlightWave Aerospace Systems has introduced its hydrogen-powered Jupiter H2 UAS. Thanks to a partnership with UK-based fuel cell builder Intelligent Energy, FlightWave was able to equip the Jupiter H2 UAS with hydrogen fuel cells. The hydrogen fuel cells give the UAS, which uses a narrow profile 70 centimeter airframe, a high thrust power plant consisting of eight motors driving cross flowing fan blades, several distinct features, such as its heavy lift capability. The American Red Cross will begin using a drone this week to assess damage in areas of Houston flooded by Hurricane Harvey in a test program that could be used after other major disasters. The agency will deploy one drone in a one-week test in an area that was particularly hard hit by Harvey. The program will use a drone built by Sci-Fi Works, a Danvers, Massachusetts-based drone manufacturer. The program is being funded by the Charitable Foundation of United Parcel Service. Precision Hawk is making strategic moves to provide its customers with a drone LiDAR solution that matches or exceeds standard manned aircraft data outputs. Precision Hawk has integrated and added the Minivux LiDAR by Regal to its service offering. The LiDAR device has a positional system that doubles the efficiency by collecting data at higher altitude and improves data accuracy. When it comes to commercial drone usage, 61% of risk managers are concerned about the potential for invasion of privacy, according to a 2017 survey conducted by Munich Reinsurance America. Other concerns include inadequate insurance, personal injury, and property damage. Honeywell has launched a new drone inspection service in view by teaming up with Intel and using its Falcon 8 Plus vehicle. The goal is to provide industrial customers a way to improve their inspections of critical infrastructure while keeping employees out of harm's way. The InView service can help customers create routine inspections of transmission and distribution systems and generate data that can be stored, searched, and accessed from offices or in the field. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Quote, Hurricane Harvey is the first major catastrophe 
in which drones have been used on a large scale by both government and commercial operators, according to Ken Long, an analyst at the Fredonia Group. In addition to helping keep emergency workers safe and out of high-risk areas, drone use can speed up the recovery process. They also allow insurance adjusters to more quickly process claims. Farmers Insurance reports that an inspector using a drone is up to eight times as efficient than when non-equipped. In the 10 days that followed Hurricane Harvey, the FAA issued more than 100 separate authorizations for drone use in the Houston area. Some of the applications for drone use were reviewed and approved by the FAA within hours, an unusually fast turnaround time. With the exception of a handful of flights conducted by media firms, all of the approved operations were for drone used in conjunction with or on behalf of government agencies. Even if the current FAA regulations remain in place, U.S. commercial drone demand will rapidly expand from what is currently an extremely small market base, according to Fredonia Group's drone study. Quote, non-military government use of drones will also climb at a robust rate through 2020, says Long. GDU has announced the official launch of the GDU-02. The GDU-02 has arms that slide into the body to give it a small form factor and extra endurance by making the arms out of aviation-grade aluminum alloy. Nicoly Wiles, GDU's Director of Digital, says that, quote, the new GDU-02 is versatile enough to appeal to both newbies and experienced users alike. The ultra-compact body is the smallest form factor for full-use drones and holds an even bigger surprise. It holds the remote control within the body of the drone, making it extremely portable. It also comes equipped with a fully stabilized 4K camera, obstacle avoidance, a visual navigation system, and a host of smart drone features. It provides for 20 minutes of flight time with a guaranteed 1km video downlink system included in the ship model. Price of the O2 model is $732. The GDU O2 Plus will officially launch next month with upgrade features and extended video transmission distance. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.